Hey folks, it's the blind guy here, and we've got another war chest game. And in this game, I am actually playing against a player who's ranked as a master. So he's won 70% of his games, and he's over 3,500, so a very good player. Funny story is I actually didn't realize this while I was playing. I thought that he was a gold player because the symbols look similar, and I'm blind. But... Uh, I think that actually helped my game a little bit. I was able to relax and play a little bit better than I would have if I had known that he was uh, such a good player. So this game's already happened. I am using the magnifier here to cover up his chips so that we can simulate it a bit more that we don't know what he has. And I'm just going to step through and, and uh, help you guys a little bit maybe with some strategy tips and maybe you guys can help me some in the comments. So just let me know. Um, I do think... Um, one of the stronger things I do in this game is using the pikeman to counter the berserker. And in my opinion, I think the pikeman is the best counter for the berserker um, in the original set. There's a few others like the uh, bishop in the newer set that's pretty strong as well. But I think in the original set, if I can get a pikeman, I don't worry about the berserker too bad at that point. So here we go. I'll kind of talk us through here what my uh, thought process was. So. I start with the uh, warrior priest and two enzymes. So I am going to work my warrior priest over here. I'm not going to run a small bag strategy because that would not work well against the berserker. So I'm thinking I'm going to just bring the warrior priest over to this left side, get kind of the free double action once he can control this marker. This can, marker's usually pretty safe. And so it's a good way to, to kind of sneak him up there and then just sit him on that. The Enzyme I'm going to bring over here. And he's going to help me bring up my pikemen. Because usually your opponent will bring the berserker onto this control marker. And so if I can bring the pikemen up into the fray up there, he becomes a lot stronger at countering the berserker. So that's the plan of attack here. We'll see what happens. So he brings out an archer. That's perfectly fine. We bring out our enzyme. Drops down the archer. I bring over the enzyme. Now this is a bit of a problem. I think he's he definitely knows what he's doing here. Is he doesn't want my pikeman to get up in the face of the berserker. So he brings the archer here. And he pro he's not going to bolster this out of the game. He's going to use it because the archer is a good counter for the, for the pikeman. So he doesn't want my pikeman coming up here and causing problems. So he puts the archer there. That's okay. Here he brings out the Berserker. I bring out the Warrior Priest. And I've got my Pikeman. Um, he recruits a Berserker. I bring over the Warrior Priest. Drop. He drops down the Scout, which is a little bit... This is a little nerve-wracking because now that scouts in the fight as well, and I don't want to sacrifice my pikemen for a bunch of scouts. I want to sacrifice my pikemen for berserkers. So he's definitely playing this well. Bring up my pikemen. Um, the knight isn't great against a um, royal guard because if he gets the royal guard bolstered, then it becomes it just gobbles up knights. But what the knight does do is it causes him to have to spend some turns bolstering his warrior. No, excuse me, his uh, royal guard. And so it's not terrible, but it's the best I could do is to use the knight over there. So let's keep going here. He brings down his royal guard. I bring up the knight. He controls with the scout, nothing too crazy. Um, at this point, he's got all of his, he's got one more berserker to recruit. Bolsters, I bring up the knight. The knight's fairly safe because that archer's not bolstered yet. And his berserker can't reach him. And I bolster the pikeman here because I don't want to get into this fight with only one pikeman. I want to have him at least bolstered 
And that way, if he attacks my pikeman, it does a lot of damage to his berserker. And pretty much takes the berserker out of the game. And I would trade a pikeman for berserker any day. So, he bolsters berserker. I bring up the warrior priest. I use the enzyme to bring up the pikeman. The pikeman's in a good spot now. He's safe from the archer. But he's in the berserker's face. He brings down his archer, and so this is where things get a little tricky. Because if I control the marker, his archer is going to just pick me off, and then his archer will just pick me off, and then I'm pretty much dead because he'll control, control, and then this guy will come down and control that one. I won't be able to do anything about it. So this is a crucial move in the game, I think. So instead of controlling the marker, I've got to get up in the archer's face. So I do. I then get that little bonus move by controlling with the warrior priest. Well, okay, no, not yet. I didn't do that. So I think this is the biggest move in the game right here. Is at this point, all he's got to do is control this. And then drop down here and control that, which he's got enough to do. And so I figured I'm dead if I don't plug this hole here with the pikemen and just sacrifice my pikemen. I think this is the the best move I make in the game. Um, so instead of doing this, I thought I was going to do this warrior priest thing, but I forgot. I actually have to save my skin here, and because if if I don't do this now, this berserker will come down control. And then this is just the last one he needs, and I can't do anything about that one. So this is the only one I can stop. So I've got to bring up bring up my pikeman into the berserker's face. You'll see then he attacks it, but that removes his berserker off the board, and now he's only got three left. And a three-coin berserker is not nearly as formidable as a five-coin berserker. So that was good. I get the free little bonus move here. It brings back another pikeman. Bolster, or uh, deploy the pikeman. Control with the knight. And now I'm thinking I've got to get my enzyme bolstered because he's gonna have to probably be the one that caps this one because of this archer. And I can't just get on there as a single, so I've gotta bolster my enzyme. He controls with the guard. I just bolster out my warrior priest. His time is done. He's done his work. Move on the enzyme to try and control that point. Which he does here. I also bolstered my knight. Now here's a problem. This is what started getting me a little nervous is he then bolsters his royal guard. Now right now he doesn't have the he's got still three at three in his supply but if he starts bringing this royal guard down he's gonna tear my knight up and my knight can't do anything about it because every time my knight hits him the royal guard will take one from the supply instead of not being bolstered anymore. So I've got to be aware of that. He does, he does recruit a royal guard, so that's his plan, it looks like. So I'm going in, I'm trying to get this spot with the archer. So I bring in my knight. I know I can always just back my knight up if I need to. If the royal guard comes down to buy myself more time. And now I'm going to get my pikeman up there in the fight. But he kills my enzyme, so I figure it's better to move back and just buy more time from that scout. I move the pikeman back. I get a nice double draw here with the knight. So I kill. Move on to the point. I think I can outpace him here. He kills my pikeman. And I figure the bigger threat is the royal guard. So I 
block that. He moves the scout on, and I cap with the knight for the win. So, I, I think I played fairly solid in that one. I didn't see any glaring mistakes. If you did, let me know in the comments below, but I think I did all right. Um, but I just, that's why I love the pikemen so much. I actually, I think I value it a lot higher than a lot of other players do. Because if he's used as an offensive weapon, at the most, he lays waste to like the entire other team if he gets the good draws and everything. And at the worst, he's the other player has to still sacrifice guys to kill him. And so he's just a, he's a really solid player. I love the pikemen. So does not do well against distance, you know, the crossbowman and the archer. But against all other units, he's really, really strong. So I'm thinking about doing a top top 10 unit ranking video. And uh, I might rank them a little differently than most people do. That's what I've got. So I'll catch you guys on the uh, next video. Thanks for watching. And laters on the Minjay. Laters on the Minjay.